Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about doing lava swords. Hot, hot lava. Ooh, hot lava. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be fun. This is a big, giant, ridiculous sword uh, from... Uh, the sword is actually originally from Gale Force 9 from the Storm Giant uh, Guard, if you're ever curious and you want to do this. But, at any rate, step one of doing lava is pretty simple. We need to get everything bright. So, I just laid down some bright ivory from Pro Acryl over the whole sword. No problem. Next up, we are going to just do a quick layer over the whole thing of warm yellow from Chimera. So we're just basically putting on a nice, quick, dirty layer, not worrying about it too much. It goes down smooth and easy over a bright white. So ta-da! Now you notice I left a tiny, tiny, bitty, 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 little bit, a little bit of white right near the base of the sword where I know I'm going to want it the hottest. I will put some paint there later, but we're going to leave that white just for now. Okay? All right, so now with a 50-50 mix of uh, the Chimera Warm Yellow and some Scale 75 Mars Orange. Uh, now you'll notice I'm kind of hitting the outside of the blade. Let's watch that again. You notice how I'm focusing, sweeping the brush along the edge and just kind of really focusing, which is going to take me off camera here in a second. I know it because that's the kind of person I am. I'm bad. I'm bad at this. Uh, 280 videos, you'd think I'd have figured it out, but nope. Uh... At any rate, we're, getting, we're just focusing in on the edge. Now I went to pure Mars orange, and again, just really with a stabbing, stippling motion. Like, you notice how rough I'm being? I am not, absolutely not, attempting to get a smooth blend here. In fact, I don't want a smooth blend. There we go, that's off camera like a genius. Uh, hey, there you go, Vince, now you remembered. Um, I want this to be rough. I want there to be rough transitions, because lava isn't this smooth, even transition, okay? All right, so now we've got a 50-50 mix of Mars Orange from Scale 75 and Pro Acryl Burnt Red. But again, oh, I'm saying these colors, but like anything will do. You don't need to worry about it being exact. Uh, and again, always with this sort of sweeping and stippling, sweeping and stippling off camera in the same way again. I love this. He's really big, by the way. It was hard to keep this guy on camera. So then I let it all dry. Now I've taken uh, some of that Pro Acryl Burnt Red and I've mixed it 50-50 with Vallejo Hull Red, which is a really nice, deep red, brown, black. And again, you notice how rough I'm being? I'm just stippling in here, just stabbing it, getting this ugly, ugly, messy thing going on. You notice how much stronger this is. You see how I keep working the brush over the wet edges to then kind of just stipple it out? And I'm making these little pockets of where it's still yellow. The key is you need to be kind of random with this. I wasn't really thinking while I was doing this. Like I was focusing on staying on camera. I was focusing on, you know, is my brush kind of being in the right place where you can see what's happening? I'm using a really old crappy brush with literally no tip. It's flat on top. I cut it flat. Uh, I just literally cut the brush completely flat. But it's not a dry brush or anything, but you could use a small dry brush. Uh, and now we're going to, uh, this is pure whole red, and then eventually we're going to go whole red plus black. I never go pure black yet. Uh, the black is just Abaddon black from uh, Citadel because it's a nice weak black that will actually work well for this. Because I just want to color the red, not paint something black. But you see how now... And so, so once we've got this messy little transition, all these different natural things where we've just stippled randomly, and that's the key. We let it be random because that's what gives us the, ma the, the magic of nature. Lava and natural patterns are really, really random. They're not these smooth, even, perfect transitions. They just happen. And so you've got to let it just happen. Go where the paint takes you, right? So I just kind of let it back in. Now I was going in there, dropping a little red in, stuff like that. Now I'm going to take a little white and yellow. So this is some of my original ivory mixed with some of my warm yellow. And I'm just kind of building up those center areas where the sword has told me that it's hot. Based on just however my brush went, it told me it was hot, right? I did, you showing you I did both sides there. By the way, this whole tutorial could be called, listen, just trust me, this is going to work. <laughs> because I imagine you looked at it in those previous steps and you were like, Vince, are you out of your mind? What? 
what is this nonsense you're doing? Trust me, it'll work. You got to stick with me. It's only like 10 minutes. You can do it. Okay. Now what I'm doing is climbing back down the colors. So after I, I took that small amount of white and yellow, you see how I popped out those areas? Now I'm going to take some thin orange yellow, which is going to really show over the white. Like you saw, it turned the white instantly that color. But it has almost no effect on the dark red, black, brown. It's a little bit of an effect. It softens it just a little. So, but it didn't have a huge effect. I'm going to go back in. I'm going to find those little hot spots. And again, you notice the stippling motion. Just always stabbing. Lots of stippling, stabbing. I'm not making a lot of like long traditional brush strokes here. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is just soften the area in between the two. So I'm taking some of that Mars orange. It was a little strong in its initial application there. Had to thin it down just a tiny bit more. And you see I'm just stabbing, just literally stabbing the edge of the transition line, right? I'm not trying to get this perfect smooth blend. That's not what we want. Instead, we want this wonderful random organic pattern where it looks like the lava's flowing and cooling and stuff like that, right? So then I let all that dry. Uh, now what we're going to do is just keep building that up. So now I have a little bit sharper brush, and now it's time to get in those little details that are going to make everything pop. The next couple steps is really about building and refining, building and refining. We were so messy in the beginning because we wanted to let the randomness show us nature, right? By not being intentional, by kind of turning your brain off and just letting it happen. We were, we were letting nature take its course, letting the paint just mix and get all up in each other's business. Okay. Now though, it's time to take a little bit stronger hand. So here I have some white mixed with that yellow again. So this is the Pro Grill Ivory mixed with the Camaro Warm Yellow. Again, any paints will work. You can use anything you want. And what I'm doing here is I ran some thin lines up the middle, always building up so it looks like there's a real inner heat and that white yellow will really pop that inner heat. Then I went and just dabbed, just touched some of the edges where it looks like, cause that's where you swing the sword and gonna contact with people. So it makes sense that some of the harder lava would chip and let out some of the heat from inside, right? I wanted to put a couple little hot spots in there. Now what I'm gonna do is take my brush and my nicer, you know, I'm taking that nicer brush and I'm just gonna find those areas that need a little more refinement, okay? So again, now we're working with a nice sharp brush. And this is where we get fun. So after I did a little bit of refinement there, you saw me like stabbing some orange in, smoothing all that out. Now we've got to make lava cracks. Lava is hot. It travels, it cracks the solid part, the, 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 uh, the parts that are drying. So what I'm doing is again, this is the same ivory and warm yellow mix. And we're just going to go ahead and trace some thin lines here. Little tiny squiggly squiggly lines little squiggles little cracks here and there just kind of all over the blade varying thicknesses you need to be really really tharp sharp and thin <laughs> tharp be tharp you know thin and sharp tharp and uh drawing a couple up from the bottom and this is really the magic that brings it together okay by doing these lines we can't just leave them like that because they don't stay that white yellow we're using that bright color because that's what's going to show real opacity over what we've already done now I'm taking some of the orange and I'm just glazing it over the edges of the cracks. I'm not being careful. I'm dragging it over the crack and the area around it with the glaze because that's going to give me this weak OSL effect where a little bit of the red, dark, deep red or black gets this tiny orange tint to it right beside where the lava crack is. The white yellow gets tinted orange strongly. It basically becomes orange. But the black next to it gets this nice orange infusion so you get this light. All right, now it's time to bring it home. So here I'm just applying up at the top and wherever I want the blade to be the coldest, the farthest away from the lava. Here I went and got some Chimera Black because it is super strong black. It's also a little satin, which I had to take care of at the end. And I'm just applying some little spots, okay? And... You can see there it is dry. So now we've got these dark, dark areas, but we're not gonna stop there, of course. Now comes the fun part. Now we're gonna crack this lava in the same way. So we take that white yellow mix. Once that black is completely dry and it has to be completely dry, you don't wanna drag black into it. Oh, my head's in the shot, it's all right. 
This is very precise work, so I apologize everybody for leaning into the shot. Uh, and we're just gonna draw these little thin cracks all throughout the darker black that we just did. Okay, and that's gonna make it look like it's solidified completely into this dry lava, but is cracking. But yet again, we're not gonna leave it completely uh, white yellow because that would be too stark. So instead, I grab some of my deeper red color and I'm just gonna do the, the edges. I'm doing the red here first, you can do any color. Again, same thing. I'm not just tracing the line with this glaze. Like this is a very transparent layer, but I'm tracing the line and the stuff around it because the heat would be emanating. Now I'm gonna grab some orange and I'm just gonna continue refining those areas up there. And by the way, I play with this a little off camera, just like adjusting, fixing a line here or there, whatever caught my eye. There's some adjustment that happens after the video because I'm just, I'm always staring at it, just fixing little things here, adding a little touch, but you get the basic concept here. Once that's orange, you can see how now all of a sudden it looks like that heat, that cracking in the lava is coming up. If I tried to draw that thin line with the orange directly, it would never show. And it wouldn't have the brightness I wanted, right? By doing it first in the white yellow with the undershade and then just dropping the glaze, not only do we get a single pass opacity, but we also get the brightness from the undershade helping the orange and it lets me then glaze with the orange to show the heat and the glow. So there you go, that's it. That's your cracked lava sword. Uh, I'm really happy with how this effect came out. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed this. If you liked it, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. Uh, as always, I very much appreciate you watching this one. If you've got any questions about this technique, uh, feel free to drop them down below. Like at the end here, I was taking some black red and I'm just kind of touching the edges of the black to make sure that it's a soft transition, that there's a little bit of softness to the edge of the black. That's all I'm doing. If you've got any questions, drop them down below. Subscribe, hit like. As always, I'll see you next time. Thank you.